I'm doing good, I'm doing good. A bit tired, so all, as always after a show, but the atmosphere does drain it out of you and um, a beer needed. No, I miss me because do you know what? Whenever I walk into the ring with Josh, I miss all that. So, but when I sat down on my seat, I could just see most of it on the floor. But it's, you know, it's part of the night. It's become synonymous with the Leeds crowd, unfortunately. But generally, you know, like they behave themselves. You know, I mean, it's no it is, it is. You know, and the beach ball in the ring weren't the best, but you know, um, it's, it's always a mad night. I was going to say straight into it. Maybe start with the free parts and we've got anything for it. No, I mean, obviously, we made the offer of 1.5 million. Um, you know, they come back and said there's so much more money in the pot than that. So, but we've also offered them 60 40 to the winner and the co promotion and turn that down as well. No, I mean, look, I, you have to wonder whether they actually want the fire. We're bringing the, the money to the table for our broadcaster, they're not. You can go on about who's got what belt, who sells what, but you know, we're bringing all this significant revenue to the table. Yeah. And it's 60 40 for the winner. If you think you're going to win the fight, it's more than a fair split. Um, the, you know, they don't, I don't know what they're doing. I was going to ask, obviously, the 1.5 guarantee. If they take that deal, is that fixed or is that a change? It's a fixed deal. No, it's a fixed deal. No. If, they want, if they want that, they can go 60 40 for the winner. That's in the pot. He said, he said in his piece, oh no, there's more like 10 million in the pot. So that's a very aggressive uh, budget in there. But if there is, take 60 forward. If you win, you get 6 million. You can't have, you can't have best of both ways. So. What would your best of both say? Say you did say 60 forward. Yeah. That's the best case scenario. The way I budget, uh, not far from the offer. Right. So you would it would be around the way. That, that's, it, that's a conservative, but fair estimate on how the event will do as a whole. Right. If it didn't do as well as we projected, yeah. then Scott Quick's going to earn significantly less than 1.5 million. And we take the risk. They haven't got to do anything for that. Yeah. They've just got to turn up and take the money. But do you think that the YouTube naysayers, the ones that have been sort of sceptical, and they say that the fight makes more money? Then take the 60 Yeah. So you, uh -huh. do you think it could make fat money? Uh, yeah, of course it could. It could. It could. It could. It did 600,000 miles. Yeah. Um, no. 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 So, you know, 1.5 is a bow on the money. Yeah. But that's why we made the offer. Yeah. But if you think it's going to do so much more, and if, or if you think it's a bad offer, make us an offer. They can't. Because they haven't got any money. You know, it's a very important thing. That's why I'm saying arrogant. Yeah. They've got no money from their broadcaster. Yeah. Got fans. Got no fans. <laughs> they've, got, they've got fans, but they've got no money. And you're home control to not, not, not next, but I think eventually Frampton will look at it and go, with all due respect to the advice I'm getting, where's the money? And then, just a quick one on the current situation, we know now that Joe's out of the key gabbing. Obviously, you go on YouTube, people are inherently reluctant to pay for anything. So yeah, 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 yeah. pay per view. But do you think, do you understand their, their sort of complaints that there isn't that massive, even though it's a very solid yeah, car, but yeah. there isn't that one marquee massive fight? Yeah, it's all about the marquee massive fight. You've got two Brits fighting for the World to Weight Championship in the world. Yeah. Kel Brook, who just did huge numbers on Sky, big numbers on Showtime. He's basically turned into a pay per view star. We could fight an Anton Decoré or Diego Chavez and then one moans and goes, eh? instead we fight a kid who's number five from Birmingham. You know, you've got Mitchell and Ares, it's just a wonderful fight. Selby here tonight, Bradovic, Joshua Johnson. It's an obscene card. And actually, the response I'm getting, like, I would say that when I announced Bell you cleverly, it was 95% negative. I'd say this one was more like 60%. 60 yeah. So, most people in boxing know, fair enough. The purses on this card are like, Probably approaching two million quid. Would it even so, be feasible to, to formulate this car without it? Not, not, yeah. not even one of the fights. Right. So, so, so it's, it's necessary. Yeah, not even one of the fights. Yeah. I couldn't make Selby Gradovic, I couldn't make Mitchell Anaris, I couldn't make Gavin Brook standalone fights. Right. So, and I can't make them individually as pay per view fights. Yeah. So the only option I've got is to stick them all together, yeah. give everyone a big night. And we go back to the same thing at Bellevue Cleverly. If you don't want to buy it, you don't have to. The way people go on is that they're being, I'm driving around the head, I'm grabbing their wrist, I'm doing a Chinese burn, and I'm saying, if you don't buy this pay per view, I'm not letting go. It's not the case. If you want a quality night of boxing, if you want three world title fights, Olympic gold medalists, two British title fights, in 16,000, 17,000 in O2, you're going to have to buy it.
and obviously you know obviously hashtag unbreakable was the yeah. was the title for, for Carol's last mm -hmm. fight. Obviously on Twitter following that you, you were using hashtag unbeatable. Mm -hmm. In your mind obviously Kel is a superstar in the making. Mm -hmm. Now obviously you promote both guys, mm -hmm. so, so there's that neutrality there, but as a promoter, mm -hmm. is that do you always have your inner sense of how things are gonna go? You'd have to fancy Kilbrook in the fight. Mm -hmm. I've seen something from Frankie Gavin over the last few days that you write fancy. Yeah. Darren Barker said to me tonight, he said, you know, he said a tough fight for Kilbrook. I said, do you think so? He said he said if Frankie gets it right on the yeah. night, it's gonna be a very tough fight for Kel. Yeah. He said, I, you know, I know that he's got the ability to walk him down, he's strong, he's powerful, but Frankie's always had that ability to is that my Snapchat? <laughs> Frank, Frank has always had that ability to, to perform, and he's a quality fighter. Yeah. Maybe he needs that step up in a level. When they had the face-offs, the head-to-heads, he showed absolutely no fear. I could see that. Yeah. Um, I'm excited about the fight. You'd have a thousand down from Birmingham. It'd be a great atmosphere. Yeah. Did you see Coogan's interview with Amir on the phone? Did you see that? Like, his response? No, I didn't. Do you know what I didn't even bother watching it? I'm sick of it. Like, yeah, he said he didn't turn down the IBF fight. The IBF president confirmed he did. Yeah. Um, he said he's not fighting Algeria and we're just making it up. He actually announced it himself on the YouTube clip. It's not that Algeria is that bad a fight. Yeah. It's that the things he says. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, Algeria, he beat Provodnikov, good win, got smashed by. Pacquiao, it's no disgrace. Yeah. When you're saying, I only want the big fights, um, go and fight Kel Brooks, doesn't bring anything to the table, um, he's not a big enough name, and then go and fight Algeria. Yeah. That's what, you know, I don't understand. But do you understand the kind of cynics remarks that, okay, you sort of said obviously Algeria beating every round yeah. by Pacquiao, not massively credible, but then obviously the, the plans in the works bring over Rios, yeah. and, and he was beating every round by Pacquiao. So yeah, but it was a different, I mean, how many times did Algeria get decked in that fight? Yeah. You know, I mean, but, but again, I'm not going back to, if Kel Brook fought Algeria next, yeah. for me, that would be an okay fight. But Kel Brook's not saying, I want Pacquiao, I want Mayweather, I don't want Kel Brook because I just want the big names. Yeah. He's going, look, I'll beat everyone. This is a seven week turnaround, this fight. We looked at the rankings again, our options were Decorey, Diego Chavez, yeah. and everyone would moan and go, oh, are they? So we go for a Brit. But can you understand how the hardcore boxing fans would want someone who's, who's sort of rated more, more highly than Brandon Rios after Gavin should yeah, prevail? Yeah, yeah, obviously, I just like the Rios, obviously. Yeah, yeah Marquez is great. I just so, I like the Rios fight. I think it opens up the US market for us in more detail as well. Yeah. Stylistically, it's a great fight. You bring it all night long. Yeah. Um, and in terms of what's available, yeah. you know, Ortiz, Berto, I prefer Rios personally. I like the Thurman fight, but they want to do that in America, and I want to keep Kel in the UK for a while. Okay, and one last question. Um, regarding AJ, mm -hmm. interview with Coogan the other day, he kind of hinted oh, oh, that his next opponent would be British. Now, presumably, you're looking more at Chisora or, or Price than Fury at this stage. Is it yeah, that accurate? Yeah, but throw Dylan White in the mix as well. Yeah. I think that's a really interesting fight that would have a lot of beef, yeah. and it would uh, it would definitely take you know catch fire in, in the build up. And that, um, that could come as soon as it's following the fight. September to Johnson. Yeah. yeah. When you're boxing May, you may get him out one more time in June or July, but mm -hmm. September at the O2 will be the first time he headlines a big fight. Fantastic. I appreciate Cheers, the time mate. as always. Cheers, Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.